Hello everybody, welcome back. I'm sorry for the lack of videos this month. I have had five deadlines, which I know probably some of you are like, that's nothing, but I'm struggling. I've just been really busy with work stuff and so tired as well. I keep having naps every day. I need to get into like a better routine. <laughs> I'm very sorry, but I have planned out the next few videos and I'm really excited about like what we have coming up. So I've got really good vibes for the rest of 2021. Today that I'm filming this is the 12th November, the day Taylor's version of Red came out and I have genuinely just spent the whole morning bopping to it. I did have a big sing-along sesh after my afternoon nap. This is a recommendations video, so obviously I have to recommend it. Like, favorite album, it's amazing. Today we are doing an updated recommendations video. So I think I've done two of these, maybe three. The last one I did on YouTube was eight months ago and then I also did one well, I did a favourites on my podcast about two months ago, maybe three. So it's been a while and now that it's like so much darker all the time and just like, I feel like I'm more in like a cozy, homey sort of vibe these days. I thought you guys might want some recommendations and some things to, something to watch, cozy up at night, watch a movie, read a book. Um, I've also got some like just random recommendations in there. So this is kind of like my winter months recommendation. We've got some Christmas stuff in there as well. I don't know if it's too early, but don't hate me. <laughs> I've also actually watched a few new things recently, which is good because I do not get out of my comfort zone with watching things very often. So this would be a good time to do an updated version. Also, I'm not gonna repeat anything I've said before. If you want any more recs, then I'll link those other videos down below. Yeah, okay, so first up we have books. So I've read a few books since being back at uni. The first one is Such a Fun Age by Kylie Reid. This one I think is the favorite, my favorite one I've read. This book follows a girl called Amira who is in her 20s. She is a babysitter and um, the book is all about kind of like, it covers, I actually really love how many topics this book covers. It's a lot about kind of like growing up, your career, your life choices, um, love, relationships, but also like, I don't know, the pressure to kind of have your life all together, especially like in your 20s. And then also covers a lot about privilege and race, fetishes, and just covers a lot, which I, and yeah, I think it's very, very impressive how this book has been written into like a fictional form and while still covering so many topics. I think I'd give this like a 4.5 out of five. I genuinely really enjoyed this book and it was definitely, I always look for like a page turner. Like I want to, be craving to finish it. I want to I want to be like excited to read it. And I definitely got that with this book. Next up we have Beautiful World Where Are You? This is the heavily anticipated new book by Sally Rooney. Um, I had it on pre-order. I was really really excited about it and I really enjoyed it. I've had a lot of mixed reviews on it. I personally really liked it. it follows four friends and it's all about their lives and their intertwining relationships, friendship, love, sex, the main girl Alice is a novelist um, which I think is really interesting because obviously her previous books are based in college and now the main like the protagonist is a novelist so it's cool how like it's progressing as like Sally Rooney kind of like I don't know as her life progressed I guess so I think it also looks a lot at like kind of the critique her work gets about you know there are huge huge things going on in the world horrible horrible stories and troubles and things to worry about um and I guess her work focuses just on like on like relationships and love and friendship and that sort of thing. And I think some people kind of like demean that to be like, oh, it's nothing. It's why are you focusing on that? There's bigger fish to fry, I guess. Um, but I think this book very cleverly points out that friendship, love, relationships, all of those sort of things, those are the things that affect all of us that are a huge part of like your mental well-being and you as a person and your overall happiness. So. I think this was very cleverly written. There's also a bit at the end I really liked about stress, comparing stress to illegal drugs, where you're kind of, there's nothing you can do about stress. People always tell you like, don't be stressed, but there's no, there's no, you know, cure. There's no magical pill that's gonna fix it for you. And it's the same kind of thing with drugs. Like you shouldn't be doing them. And if you are just try and do them a bit less, like, you shouldn't be stressed and if you are just try and be a bit less stressed and I really like that analogy I finished this like a couple months ago and the fact that that's stuck with me I don't know thought it would be worth mentioning I wouldn't say this is my favorite book I've ever read I think I'd give it a four out of five and I think I preferred conversations with friends I did still really love it 
and beautiful cover, so yes. And then the third book that I have is the book that I'm currently reading, which is The Midnight Library by Matt Haig. I haven't read that much of this book. I think I'm only at like 50 pages, so I really can't comment. Um, but I really, really wanted to read this for a long, long time. And so at the start of the book, the main character, Nora, takes her own life and then she, I guess, wakes up in this library filled with books and each book is like a direction her life could have taken if she made a different decision, kind of looking at regret and the implications of the decisions we made. And it says, this book raises the ultimate question with infinite choices, what is the best way to live? And I can imagine the ending already, so I don't know, like I'm not gonna, I haven't finished the book, so no spoilers, but I'm really enjoying it so far. I love the concept. I love that I'm reading something that's a little bit like, different to just kind of like your classic novel because that is what I always tend to be drawn towards and so far I recommend it. Next up we have movies. These are just going to be a couple movies that I've watched recently. My first favourites video includes kind of like my all time favourite movies, hint it's about time. <laughs> but yeah so if you want to see that sort of thing that's in the first one I ever did, I think that was in lockdown. These are some movies that I've watched recently, which I recommend. So the first one, I'm very, very late to the party, but I've watched Notting Hill the other day for the first time. I can't believe I've never seen it, but that sums me up. I've never seen like any movies. And actually, I don't know if I would so I recommend it because I think it was good. I think it's overhyped, like I didn't love it. I don't think I loved it as much as some people do because that, that movie has so much hype around it. But I thought it was a nice, sweet story and it's set in London, which is nice because that's where I grew up, so it gives me like cosy home vibes and if you haven't seen it, I feel like it's one of those movies everyone's meant to see, so that's the first one I have. Next I watched Grand Budapest Hotel. I've never watched a movie like this at all that I can remember. It's directed by Wes Anderson and it was a very, very interesting movie. I wouldn't say it followed, it's, I actually don't even know how to summarise it. I think, so it's the story of this old kind of like iconic hotel and this guy goes to stay there and speaks to the kind of owner, the person in charge of the hotel. That person then tells him the story of how he came to be the owner and like the story of the hotel and how he moved up through the ranks and everything and it was a really really cool movie. The way it's shot is like genuinely unbelievable. It's so like I don't want to say aesthetically pleasing because that's not doing it justice but it's so the attention to detail is so impressive. Um, the symmetry, just a really cool movie and not like many things that I've ever watched before. So I'd recommend it as just like a, a fun, trying something new kind of movie. I've only recently watched this. Again, I'm late to every movie, but this is up there now with my top, top movies. About Time has always been my favorite movie, but Lion is also up there now. I think I could even rewatch it already. It's unbelievable. It covers a true story, which I just love that it's a true story. It's about this boy in India. He grows up in like a small little village. So the little kid, I think he's, I don't even know, I want to say like six or seven. Um, he's out with his brother at night trying to get work and he accidentally ends up on a train and the train goes for like multiple days. He ends up in a whole different part of India with where they speak a different dialect and he doesn't speak the language. So then he kind of has some sort of like troubles there. Eventually he gets adopted by an Australian couple and then he goes, grows up in Australia and then the movie kind of follows his plight to find home again because like when all this happened, he was so young, they don't like, they don't even know, nobody could find out. Like from what he was saying, no one could work out where he was from. So it's really good. Firstly, I love that it was set in India. I thought that was really, really cool. And then the kid and the, the actors are just, I cried so much at this movie. It wasn't like I just cried once at the ending. It was like, I cried, composed myself, cried, composed myself multiple times. This was such a heart wrencher. Like if you're in the mood for a cry, this movie is unbelievable. I loved it. Just such a special story. And then I went on to watch all the like interviews with the real life guy who this actually happened to on YouTube and it's just a crazy story. So I really loved that movie. Um, I also watched Call Me By Your Name for the first time. I feel like most most of you will have seen that. I also really, really liked that. Again, a very another very pretty movie, like the attention to detail with the shots is just stunning. And I also love the kind of flawed storyline. I think it's, I don't know, 
I just really enjoyed that movie. So then I've also got a couple Christmas movies. <laughs> My favourite is Nativity. I remember I saw this in the cinema when it first came out. I was in primary school, I don't know how old, but yeah, genuinely the best movie. I always listen to the soundtrack in the library. Gets me in the mood. It's just the nicest movie and I haven't actually watched it this year yet but I will soon and I probably will cry. My mum always cries, we always watch it as a family. I Such a nice movie, if you haven't watched it, it's set in Coventry, which is in like the Midlands. Follows this school teacher um, and he has like a primary school class and they're putting on a nativity. And so it's all, oh, I just love it so much. It's all about like, it's a little bit about love, but it's also about the holidays, Christmas, like what that means and great soundtrack too. And then, my other favourites are The Holiday, that's such a lovely movie, and also uh, Love Actually. Okay, and then on to podcasts. I don't have too many, I haven't really delved into any new ones, but Still Loving Goes Without Saying with Sefi and Wing, my all-time favourite podcast. I love them with my whole heart. <laughs> I, I have nothing to say, really. They're just the best podcast ever and never a dull Monday when they upload. I also... I'm enjoying Emma Chamberlain's podcast and Lexi's podcast, nothing new. I've been listening to both those podcasts forever. I've listened to like every episode Lexi's uploaded and I love every single one. She's a great content creator and something about her like, she has a great way of speaking. I don't know how to, <laughs> I obviously don't have a great way of speaking because I can't even put into words what I mean, but I just think she's very, very smart and very articulate. I love the way she puts like her words into sentences and she's fun, she's the right amount of like funny but serious and I just love her. She just uploaded a podcast about beating the winter blues which I really enjoyed and I love, I just love every episode she likes. Also, shameless plug, I do have a podcast if you wanna listen. Um, it's called Growing With The Flow. I upload a, a new episode every Monday and it's like my little baby. I love that project so, so much. So if you wanna listen, <laughs> it's on Spotify, Apple Music, all of the places and it's always linked down below. Thanks. <laughs> now I have a couple TV shows. So I haven't actually watched many. The only one that's really springing to mind is Squid Game and the new season of Sex Education. I'm not going to talk about those because I feel like everyone's watched them anyway. But if you haven't, really enjoyed both of those. And then the other things I've been watching are Bake Off. I love Bake Off, always love Bake Off. Um, I've actually missed the past couple of weeks so I do need to catch up on it but Great British Bake Off, best show ever. It's so good, it's perfect for like, you know when you're feeling uncomfortable or like you're not feeling your best and then you have to watch like Friends or Modern Family or something that kind of like grounds you back to just like a happy like away with the fairies kind of place. Bake Off's a great show for that. Um, like after a long stressful day of uni, Bake Off is the perfect show i love the cast this year i was talking about this on the podcast the other day like i just love the cast everyone's so nice it just never disappoints i don't think of it as a super serious eyes glued to the screen kind of show but sometimes that's nice it's nice to watch with neve and still like chat through it and stuff and then i also have been watching gogglebox always love gogglebox one of my comfort shows i think and i really really like it i watch it a lot when i'm at home next up i have some creators i obviously watch tons of people on youtube honestly um but these are some people who i never miss an upload from i am there every time they post a new video and i'm excited you know when you see them and you're recommended that they've posted a new video and you're like yes these these are those people for me at the moment number one is definitely meg hughes i'm obsessed with that girl her videos are so great i love her positive but also sort of like realistic presence i think she's really well she's really articulate with her words and I love her editing as well and I love I think she's just a really nice mix of kind of like down to earth chill and very casual like you feel like you're hanging out with a friend but she also edits her videos beautifully which I appreciate <laughs> um next I have Lexi again obsessed with her she uploads tons of vlogs which is really really helping me out at the moment she genuinely uploads like three times a week sometimes which is insane I don't know how anyone can do that so yeah but I love her videos they, she mainly does like New York vlogs, perfect vibe, I love New York, I love her. Um, and she talks about kind of like fitness, food, she goes on these lovely like walks and runs, um, she talks about books, she, she's just into like a lot of the things I'm into as well, so I really enjoy her. Um, as always, Lin Trong, one of my all-time favourite YouTubers, um, 
I also just watched Moya's graduation video, which was so nice, so, so nice, like made me feel things. <laughs> um, yeah, I really enjoyed it. So I always watch her videos as well. And I also like JC Marie, I watch her vlogs. They are great, kind of like you're cleaning your room, you're doing your washing up or something like that. Great vlog to put on because they are a decent length and they're quite chatty, which I like. So yeah, those are my creators at the moment. And then I've also got some random bits and pieces. So um, I wanted to talk quickly about my film camera. I get a lot of questions about this. I just got a new roll of film developed and I think it's my favorite, I say this every time, but I think it's my favorite ever. Like the pictures are so nice and they're mainly from the end of summer, start of this semester. And they just make me really happy. They're really cute, pretty nice pictures and they came out so well so yes i'm loving my film camera at the moment the one that i have is the olympus super super zoom 70g and the film that i'm using at the moment is kodak gold i ordered this on ebay i think and i got a better deal than if you were to buy it in like a camera shop so i'd recommend like buying a few rolls rather than just like buying it in the camera shop and getting ripped off <laughs> but yeah this is the camera that i use i got this on ebay in like the middle of summer and i only paid 25 pound for it and i really really love it the quality is amazing and the pictures are so pretty i used to have the kodak m35 camera which is a great like beginner film camera and i love the pictures on that as well they, they all came out really nicely but this does just have like better quality you can also zoom uh there's a few different flash options you can even do self timer which is cool so isn't that cool yeah so next i have written the new cadbury chocolate if you haven't tried the vegan cadbury chocolate i think it's the best vegan chocolate to like hit the supermarket it's unbelievable i also really love nomo but something kind of nostalgic and it's so creamy like i just really love it they have uh, they, I think they make it with almonds and they have a salted caramel and just like a smooth one. I recommend the smooth one. Both are nice, but like the smooth is very, you get to appreciate the creaminess of it so much more. Yeah. And then finally I have my weighted blanket. Here it is. I sleep with it every night. I was having issues sleeping for a while and I got this thing back out. I hadn't been using it for a while and I actually think it's made like a, a good impact on me. It f makes me feel a bit like safer. <laughs> not that I feel unsafe but like I think I just it feels like comforting and I enjoy that I really like it it's from Mela Comfort so if you want to get the same one I really really like it but also I guess I'll include my new water bottle because I've been obsessed with this I got the I think it's S Sistema water bottle this brand is like I feel like chill childhood lunch boxes and like childhood water bottles are from this brand but this is a one liter bottle they had a few other colors but i bought an assorted one so you didn't get to pick the color it's just like whatever you get is whatever you get i wouldn't have picked bright pink but it's fine and i love that it's a liter so it's a lot easier to like carry around a lot of water without having like multiple bottles and stuff i think that's everything for this video again i am sorry for being mia but i promise i have like videos planned i'm really excited for like everything that's coming up um and I got my exam timetable today, so I'm hope like I'm finishing for Christmas in literally like a month. So I'm gonna have more time to make videos over that period. And I don't know. I'm really I don't know. I'm just I'm doing good and I'm happy and life's good. I've just been stressed and I've got a lot going on. So thank you for bearing with me and thanks for sticking around. As always, I love you all to like the moon and back a million times. So I think that's all I have to say. But let me know if you have any other recommendations I'd love to hear because I always need more. Any movies, books, shows, whatever you have, I'm down to hear. Podcasts, I'd love more podcasts because I am a loyal listener to like a few, but I need, I need to widen my podcast listening. Okay, cool. Thanks for watching and I will see you next Sunday. Love you very much. Also, podcast out tomorrow if, if you want. <laughs> Bye! Thank you.